Hello divers, uh, this is Dr. Kalinja's scuba diving story and this is an English version for what I'm doing in Korean and uh, let me briefly introduce myself I was born in 51 so I will be 52 next year I am a native Korean, I was born, I was raised, educated, worked, lived in Korea only so my, uh, sorry about my, my English, which is quite limited, but you're going to have to uh, put up with it and please focus on the contents, what I'd like to tell you. So in 1984, I passed national board exam for ear nose throat and head and neck surgery and the same year. I started scuba diving led by my own wife who is still my wife and who will be my wife for the rest of my life. 1994 I became a scuba diving instructor Paddy and my number was 84832. They expelled me later anyway so in 19... Uh, uh, in uh, 2010, somehow I became an SSI International Training Director who can teach instructor trainers and instructor certifiers as well. And for three full years, starting from 1913 to 17 February, I worked as the Training Director of SSI Korea. What do I do now? Uh, I work as a doctor in Freedom Rehabilitation Center and also a diving instructor in a small SSI dive center called the Korea Dive College. Actually, uh, students don't come to me anymore. I don't know why. Uh, to talk about the diver's ear, uh, we need to cover terminology, anatomy, the cause of external otitis, prevention, treatment, and uh, I like to introduce how to blend divers your drop. So, uh, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> As of terminology, external otitis or otitis externa is the right medical term for this disease entity. Diver's ear, swimmer's ear, tropical ear are the nicknames. But as for divers, diver's ear is uh, most comfortable. So, anatomy. Let me cover this briefly. Uh, this is called the auricle. And in Korean language or in Oriental uh, Chinese, Japanese language, it's called the rooftop of ear, which is uh, Ige, and there's a hole on your auricle which lead to tympanic membrane uh, to put easily it's a eardrum. So the external auditory canal or external ear canal start from the hole on your auricle all the way down to tympanic membrane. Behind tympanic membrane is middle ear and middle ear and inner ear is connected with three small bones called ossicles it's, uh, it's right here and um, in middle ear is ear orifice of uh, auditory tube so it's a uh, in other words it's a eustachian tube and I have already produced a Korean version uh, introducing this eustachian uh, uh, tooth, but I'll try to make the same thing in English as well. And ossicles look like this, and when they are combined, looks like this. Maybe too small for you to see, but uh, ossicles has their uh, function, which is very important in hearing. Now, the cause of divers, swimmers, 
tropical eel or Exonotitis. Divers and swimmers, or people living in tropical, uh, tropical regions, they keep on going into water. And then water keep on going into the ear, and that will wash the protective mechanism of your external ear canal, including ear wax and the acidity. Acidity of your ear canal. Then can infection come much easily. Also, what you call Q-tip that you use after maybe uh, shower or in uh, in the Orient, a lot of people do what you call sauna bath. They use a Q-tip to finalize what they are doing to feel better, which doesn't really result in a good or better way. Also, they put their fingertips when they feel itchy. Or some people use things like this. So this is a pen for you, my own <clears throat> notebook. But anything that goes into your ear can cause secondary infection. Wax. This is a protective uh, fun has a protective function. And seruminal gland produces serumen, which is wax. And it is better that we have some of them in our ear canal. Uh, sometimes uh, there are some pathological uh, accumulation called impacted serumen, which needs to be cleaned. But it is best for you to go to the hospital and have doctors remove them. If you try to remove them yourself, anything can happen. Also, uh, <clears throat> in Orient, we have more dry wax than wet wax, which is opposite side of the Occident region. So it's like 85 to 90 percent of people in the Orient have dry, while the other side is wet. Wet may be easier to remove but it's easier to get impacted too. Uh, let me go with the cause. Q-tip. Q-tip, ooh. This one is a Q-tip that is left after you used it. And people come with some plugged up feeling. Then uh, we look, at, <laughs> look into the ear canal with our otoscope or microscope and we find them uh, quite often. Pretty good source of income for autologists. This gentleman is a singer called Q-Tip. I don't know why he put his name, his group, this Q-Tip name, but he was uh, pretty popular in 1970 and 80, maybe. Let's uh, see how we prevent the external otitis. This is what is in medical uh, book. Do not put or stick anything into your ear canal except electric pole and your elbow. If you can, you can do that. Electric pole, your elbow. Other than that, do not put anything into your ear canal. Then you can prevent it. But for divers, swimmers, tropical people, Water has to go in. In that case, do not touch and there will be no disease. Which means, let the water go, let the water out. And uh, also, find some way to maintain the acidity of your, your canal. Once the, the external otitis start, then you have to uh, treat that. So how we treat? Uh, we try to maintain the acidity of your canal somehow, maybe swept with uh, alcohol sponge or whatever. Alcohol vinegar is very helpful for maintaining the acidity. Uh, when we have the discharge, what we call pus, 
then we do in the hospital we do the culture and the sensitivity test and find out the right antibiotics to treat it and uh, those antibiotics can be used at, uh, per oral per injection and even as a solution uh, not very common but still there's a there's some chance of getting what you call malignant external otitis. This is the infection of your canal with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is a very toxic bacteria and it can be extremely dangerous, which means it can be even lethal when the infection goes into the intracranial uh, areas. So any disease should be treated appropriately and early enough. Let me uh, talk uh, briefly about uh, diver's ear solution. Diver's ear drop. It's now being used very often in uh, dive resorts and liveaboard vessels. And how we make it? It looks like there's a quite variety of uh, blending technique and uh, the usual recommendation is one alcohol, one vinegar, and three distilled water. So one, one, three. What if we make it one, one, two? What if one, one, one? Doesn't really make any difference. Maybe if it is for prevention, it's better to put more water in because it's prevention. If you have a real infection and you can feel the discomfort, you can feel the pain. In that case, maybe a little more uh, alcohol and or vinegar can be used. So this is what they look like. Easily, you can easily get them from uh, maybe drugstore. Uh, in Korea, these are all uh, over the counters, so you can get them easy. Vinegar we don't get at the uh, pharmacies, we get at the supermarket. They are very cheap when they are bought just for the bottles. But once somebody blend it and if they sell it, the price will go up. So why don't you just go to the pharmacy and the supermarket and buy them and just put one, one, three, um, ratio and blend it yourself. Uh, there are some uh, general precautions for using this uh, solution. It's when you feel your eardrum is ruptured, do not put this solution into your ear because your soft middle ear mucosal membrane will be irritated and sometimes can be very painful. And it is not a good idea to put this solution when you feel, any divers can feel when their uh, eardrum is ruptured. When you equalize, the air comes out and suddenly there are pain, you know. And if the same thing happens on the water, you feel dizzy. So divers usually know. Uh, <clears throat> when you have discharge and when you can feel, when you begin to feel the discomfort, that means external otitis is beginning acutely. So in this case, ratio up for your ethanol and or vinegar. Uh, for prevention, you can just uh, drop the solution boop, and then you can remove them immediately because you are only trying to add some acidity into your, your canal. But when you have uh, the disease with pain, uh, with uh, whatever discomfort, then put them in and wait minimum 5 to 10 minutes. Maybe better if it can take longer. Um, sometimes I tell my patient to put the solution in and cover your ear and go to bed. But that, that much is not necessary, I think. So you can use it this way. Uh, once you put the solution in and you remove them, 
Please don't ever manipulate somehow using whatever Q-tip. You can manipulate using your own uh, thumb, elbow, and electric pole. So uh, this was a diver's ear. Um, we talked about some of the terminologies that uh, it was external otitis and uh, about the uh, anatomy of the ear starting from the auricle, ear canal, tympanic membrane, middle ear and inner ear and uh, the causes of external otitis it was washing out the protective mechanism of ear canal and you manipulate your ear canal and then the secondary infection begins Prevention. If you are a frequent diver and if you get this problem frequently, that means you can use the ear solution for prevention method. Uh, treatment. Once you have the problem, better go to the hospital and better take whatever prescription your doctor gives you. It is better when you stop it as soon as possible. If you let it last, then all kind of problems can happen. I even talked about the malignant otitis uh, externa, which is by Pseudomonas. Uh, about uh, blending divers your drop, they said alcohol, vinegar, and distilled water, one, one, three. So this was uh, Dr. Kong's uh, scuba diving story, it was the first story, and it was about divers here. Uh, thank you for attention, and please, Wait for my next video.